Hello, Little Mouse, Chapter 32, a miraculous ladybug fanfiction written and narrated by Mira Rose. Artwork by Candy Fluffs on Instagram. As per usual, go check her out. Go check out her store. Go give her lots of love. Go give her lots of support, etc., etc. All the good stuff. And if you are still listening, comment. <sighs> Adrian's revel revolution. Wow, I mean that fit. Comment Adrian's revelation. Please enjoy. Hello, little, little. I just can't talk. Enjoy chapter thirty-two, folks. Give it a like if if you're still listening. Adrian aggressed. There were moments over the week following finding out his father was Hawkmoth that made Adrian wonder if he should have let himself get akumatized. Because then at least this ever throbbing ache in his chest would dull. But that was the weak option, and he knew it, which meant he couldn't tell anyone. He couldn't tell anyone how stiffly he walked while taking the high road. The most jarring outcome wasn't even his mother, or the revelation that felt like betrayal from his father. It was that, despite his actions to make his life his own, Adrian ended up back at the aggressed mansion. He spent the last seven days sleeping in the bedroom he used to sneak out of, and did so willingly. Was there any part of his life that was his, not predestined or manufactured? Something he earned on his own? Well, the answer to that was, overwhelmingly, yes. He'd earned his mask, and if there was a tool to measure worthiness, he'd probably be at the top. He'd gotten his miraculous from Master Fu from doing a nice, if not good, deed, and he had chance after chance to lose it, but he'd earned the respect of his partner and masked co-workers. Without his father's help, Adrian earned a place in this world all on his own. Even so, over the week he took to help himself adapt, Adrian shut out the world. It helped that they didn't go public with Hawkmoth's identity. On day two, without an akumatization, the news joked about getting a break. But by day four, they were begging for interviews, asking the heroes to share what they knew. But by day seven? Well, by day seven, Adrian stopped paying attention to the news because he was busy making bread. For the first time in years, Adrian explored the building he grew up in. He told the staff to take a vacation and, with the Dupeng Changs on speed dial, he turned it into his home. Well, he started to, at least. Did Tom have to come help him rewire the chandelier when he tried to use a cleaner on it after keeping it on all night? Yes, because the bulbs exploded and he thought he broke the entire thing, so naturally he tugged on it and twisted the insides enough to cause a short. <laughs> Did Sabine have to show him how to properly wash and season a cast iron? Yes, and he was already trying to figure out how to apologize to the chef when he came back from vacation. And did Marinette, well, multi-mouse, help him explore every nook and cranny of his father's office? Also yes. And they found the peacock miraculous in Natalie's room. Yet another harsh truth that stung like a plucked feather. He didn't know what happened to her. Or even his parents. He didn't want to know. Not yet. His team took the next steps as he recovered from the shock of it all. It's not like anyone knew how to respond to their teammate's dad being their arch nemesis. Even Adrian didn't know how to respond, but there was a small validation to it. He never would have to doubt that his teenage rebellion was just that. Instead of angst, it came from a place of a victim constantly gaslighted and restrained to the point of abuse. 
If he'd found out the truth about his father before deciding to leave, he might have actually become Cat Blanc. He might have actually become the Cat Blanc Marinette feared. She'd opened up about it a bit more over the week, mostly with his prying. The worst part was that he could see it happening. If anything between them happened a step differently, be it him not overhearing the breakup as his father's idea, or learning Hawkmoth's identity, or finding out his mother was still existing, he would have gotten akumatized. It wasn't a question of if. He would have. And Marinette saw that timeline. Marinette feared that timeline. But now, they were in a timeline where they stayed together. And he found love in her parents and freedom in the house that caged him. Now, Adrian was in a timeline where he was happy. Cat? Cat Noir sauntered into the Dupeng Chang Bakery, surprising Marinette and everyone on the street corner. It was the first time the public saw a mask in a week, much less seeing a superhero run errands. Hey. He slapped a bill on the counter, grinning. Got any of those cheese stuff croissants? What, you spoiling your cleaning staff? She shot back, grinning. She, as multi-mouse, and Plague got to know each other well as they shared opposite corners of a dust cloth in the sanctum Hawk Moth operated out of. Cleaning staff? Yes. He scratched his chin, nonchalantly posing for the phones behind him. But I actually have plans to go out to dinner with my girlfriend tonight. Marinette raised an eyebrow as she handed him a paper bag. Oh? The two of you have plans? Something nice and fancy. Does it require her to sneak in? He laughed, shaking his head. No. As much as I love nostalgia, there's no reason to act like we used to. You know? It'll be nice to go out together without masks. Marinette blinked a few times, then looked away as she tucked some loose hair out of the way. Oh? What time? I'm thinking about an early dinner. Around five, you know? That sounds delightful. She looked back with a tooth-filled smile. I'm almost jealous. Well, yes, well, just because we're dating doesn't mean I don't want to stop impressing her, if you know what I mean. Wow, so modest. He winked and took his change. Have a good one. He dropped his voice, hand lingering over hers as he curled fingers around the coins little mouse. Their smiles matched as he turned away, and he could tell from the weight of the bag she'd put in more than his order. The question he'd wonder all the way home would be if she spoiled Plague or him. Hopefully he'd win with the boyfriend card, but Plague, despite his attitude and burps, was pretty cute. With a spring in his step, Cat Noir returned home still going through his bedroom window as he always did, but for a different reason than he used to. Adrian didn't have to sneak around anymore. Now the only thing he had to hide was his mask. Not his feelings and time. Thank you so much for listening. Chapter 33 is on the way. In the meantime, you can check out these other videos for more fan fiction, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye! If you're still com- if you're still commenting, wow, if you're still listening, comment, Plague's pretty cute. <laughs>